Let me set the stage for you. We're right outside Hillsborough Inlet, started our drift in about 300. We've got an east-northeast wind pushing us inshore here. So I wanna kinda really just drift all the way from 300 to 100 and keep working this area till I find that perfect depth. I'm gonna get back in the stern and see if I can help Carlos out here. <laughs> see him yet? There's, there's fish right with him. Go, 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 hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Yeah, he's on? got it. He's You're on. It. Yeah. He's eating it. He's eating it. What do you Again, mean that's why, that's why you got to have that eating? spinner rigged and ready. There you go. Turn one fish into a double right away. There we go. Way to start the day right there, baby. Nice. You know, Carlos just mentioned he just let his long bait out and it really got nervous and was scooting over to the side. I think you'll agree, man, that's the most exciting thing about kite fishing is the visual aspect. Yeah, and know? that also tells you you gotta keep an eye on it at all times, at too. Because you can go go right. get another bait and you can get smacked on the way. That's right. You know, but, you so. know, being able to read those baits, read those lines, to be able to react accordingly when you get a strike or to let the fish eat the bait, you know, so many different scenarios could unfold. And as Carlos mentioned, mm -hmm. you really gotta be on top of it. You know, kite fishing is not set it and forget it. No. You know, <laughs> by no. any means. No, it's maintenance, it's constant yeah. maintenance. And it really requires a team effort. You know, whoever that dedicated kite guy is, is focused on those kite baits. That's his job for the day. You know, it's not anything else. It's to focus on those kite baits and to maximize that presentation. And again, like Carlos said, you know, it's you step away for one second and a fish could come up and just crush one of your baits. So How many really... times does that happen? Oh man. I mean, can we count them? Hey, listen, I'm gonna walk away. Hopefully yeah. one of your baits gets right. crushed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on again. You're tight? Yep. You're tight? Yep. Whoa, Carlos is tight. Nice, nice. You know, earlier we talked about not only how exciting kite fishing is for the visual aspect and being able to present baits all around the boat, but we also stressed how important it is that you're on top of all the details because that's really what it's about. It's a detail-oriented type of fishery. You know, you can see both Carlos and myself, you know, we're monitoring our rods. We're constantly looking at our baits, making slight adjustments as that wind fluctuate and that kite goes up and down. Those baits are going to come up and down. And that brings up, you know, an excellent point. Where exactly do you want your bait in the water? Do you want it right up on top or do you want it submersed, you know, below the surface? Really, you don't have to keep that bait right up on top. As a matter of fact, I don't like to do that because I think it wears the bait out a little bit too much. It completely you know? does. Doesn't it? Yep. So, you know, I like to keep the bait suspended below the surface. My floats are 12 to 15 feet above my hook, about 12 feet. So I'm okay with that float being a couple of feet above the surface, two, three, four, five feet above the surface. You know, that means that bait's below the surface real natural presentation. He's not struggling too hard to live, to survive. He's gonna last longer. He's gonna attract more strikes. And that's really important when you're fishing these fragile baits. You know, right now we're fishing pilchards. We didn't have an opportunity to go out and catch any bait. You know, so we stopped at a bait boat this morning and purchased some bait, certainly an option. But unfortunately, wasn't the best quality bait. It's been penned up for a while. A lot of them are dying in the bait wells. You know, so you really have to treat these baits like gold, nice and gentle. And I don't want to put too much stress on them. So I keep them suspended. As I mentioned, I keep that float just a couple of feet above the surface, no more than six to eight feet above the surface. You know, you don't have to keep that bait right up on top. It's just not that important. Certainly it makes for a nice presentation, especially on a glass calm day to see that bait flickering right on the surface. But that's a little bit unnatural too, you know, a wounded goggle eye or pilchard is not gonna lay right up on top flickering, flickering around. You know, it's just not what it's gonna do. So don't be afraid to let that bait swim a little bit. Get it below the surface a little, let him live. Let him live, let him live until he dies. That's the idea. Got him, baby! Got him! 